Hey everybody, happy Saturday. I want to welcome you to the From Powerless to Powerful show. I am your host, Rise and Win Coach Cynthia Newell. I run a life coaching practice named Dare to Dream where I show wives and moms how to give voice to their vision so that it has full expression in their lives. I know I came to earth to encourage and empower through inspirational teaching, spiritual enlightenment, and guided transformation. See, I believe that we all deserve to start waking up to a life that we love, and that's why through this podcast, my listeners get trained on how to release internal conflict. It's my goal, my intention to help you strengthen your resilience muscles so you can enjoy the moments and minutes of life. And it's time. It's time for us to create a life that makes us want to jump out of bed every day. So today's show, I want you to sit back, listen, learn, and laugh as I share tales of personal tragedies and testimonies while highlighting the wisdom that I've acquired from them. If you missed any of my previous shows, they are now available on my YouTube channel, Dare to Dream. You can subscribe there and listen to all the insightful moments that I've shared with special guests from seasons one through five. And so I just want to welcome you to today's show. Before I get started, I just want to say a special thanks to Ms. Kimmy Robinson of Elation Gospel Net- Network. We want to keep Miss Kimmy in our prayers as she goes through, you know, some um some periods where she's learning to trust God even more. We want to pray for her strength, we want to pray for her mind, we want to pray for her daughters, and we just want to pray for everyone who may be finding themselves facing a challenging moment in their life. Life is so precious and it's so short, and so we just want to value the people who are in our lives. I want to thank Kimmy so much for opening up her platform and sharing, you know, not only the uh, radio network platform with me, but also her magazine, you know, Elation Gospel Magazine. I want to thank her so much. Kimmy, you keep going strong in the work that God has called you to do and watch doors continue to open. So, We're going to dive into today's show, Saved But in Love with a Gay Woman. And I know a lot of you all are like, what? Saved and in love with a gay woman? But a few years ago, I, uh, maybe not a few years ago, I'm 42 now, so one a few years ago. I think I was about 18 years old, and I remember being um, in the home with my mom and Uh, My sister and my sister comes in the house. It was already speculation of whether or not she was a same-sex lover, but she had finally, you know, admitted it that she uh, wanted to be with women. And I want to talk about the dynamic of sibling relationships, you know, when our siblings, I guess, do things or go down paths that we particularly feel are wrong or we were taught that they are wrong, how do you deal with your sibling relationship when you have um, something that they're doing that you both know it's not of God or what you were taught? But before I even dive into that, I want to share a poem that I wrote um, in my book, my latest book, Gemini Diaries, Heart of a Woman, and it's around this topic of being saved but in love with a gay woman. And the poem is titled Same Sex Lover. Now, I want to give you a backdrop about this poem. I wrote this poem as a way of amends for me and my sister because after she had shared with me her her preference, you know, it put a riff in us. Me and my sister were just a year and a month and maybe about five days apart. So we grew up you know, very close, and maybe I was just in my own little bubble when I was growing up dealing with my own things. I never really paid attention to the fact that she liked to do a lot of tomboyish things. I mean, I figure we all go through those phases, you know, where we're climbing trees, and um, when we play catch a girl, get a girl, we catch the nearest person that's near us, but I never noticed that she catched primarily girls, you know, or... um, 
she was in her little tomboyish stage a little bit longer than what society says we should be in it. You know, um, I just love my sister, and we played, and we had a bond. So when she told me, I felt betrayed. You know, I went through a period of anger, and we even had a fight that day. And I think I was about eight months pregnant. And so this is even interesting to share that. I was eight months. No, was I eight months? No, I wasn't pregnant then because I was only 18. I didn't get pregnant until 20. But I wasn't married when I got pregnant. So we all do things, you know, that go against the word of God. Am I condoning it? No. But before I dive in, I just wanted to share um, a little background information about this poem because it was a way that I made amends with her. And actually what had happened was there was this um, this poetry night that uh, her and I used to go to. Uh, it was called Sister Speak at Cicero's in the Loop, Del Mar Loop here in St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, she, I told her I was coming. She was really surprised because it was primarily for same-sex uh, individuals, but everybody was welcome to it. But I went to the event, and I put my name on the roster to do a poem. And when I got up to do the poem, I called my sister up to the platform with me, and she was so shocked because it wasn't planned. And this is the poem that I read to my sister. I'm inspired to love you. The respect we have for one another is a glue that holds this bond together through thick and thin, sunshine and rain. No matter the weather, I'm inspired to love you. People look at you and instantly they see a dyke and strike the thought of getting to know you, the you I know. Judgment they pass, exposing discrimination. Is there really a solution to this illusion? Like, really, how can people take a poll and choose where your soul will eternally rest? I mean, really, are they there when you go before your master and your sins and griefs are bare? What's the deal? Are people for real? What cross did they die upon? What length of love have they gone to love you brotherly? The commandment Christ echoes constantly. I say... Forget them, whoever they be, and walk liberally in who you are. Because the truth is, we all have sinned. Some have aborted kids, scrutiny they can't take, so they keep their secrets hid. I'm inspired to love you. We ride and die tight. For when life brings contrite emotions, sadness, and pain, let my love be the push you need to reign, same-sex lover. When I read that poem to my sister, it just sent a wave of emotions through her, and she started crying, and it touched me. And what I wanted to convey to my sister in that moment was, no matter who you are, no matter who you choose to be in this life, I'm inspired to love you. Our siblings do things that we are not particularly proud of, um, but nothing should get in the way of our sibling bond. And so I want to talk today about total acceptance. I feel like the only way that we could really totally accept someone, and, and I know, let me back up for just a minute, I know that there are many avenues that I can go with this podcast, but I really wanted to talk about acceptance today accepting our siblings with their faults and their flaws, accepting them as just people and anyone, not just our siblings, but even our parents. You know, when our parents do things that are hurtful or we feel that are detrimental or harmful to us, accepting them for who they are. And what I've learned in my life is how you accept people, even with the, the characteristics that are um, that they have that just aren't, um, you feel the best, you first have to learn how to accept you, accepting all of your flaws, your mistakes that you've made, the things that you are not so proud of, those secrets that you hold. You know, instead of holding yourself in a prison of guilt, of shame, being ashamed, you accept yourself for 
who you are, for what you've done, for where you've come from. And the steps that I've learned, no one is, um, if you've been following me for quite some time, you know my story, my history in the past few years. You know, I found myself homeless, and I hated waking up to that reality. And a lot of times when we struggle emotionally in a situation, whether it's financial, um, even in a divorce, we stay in this emotional pit is because we cannot, we've, one, place judgments on what we're experiencing. I can't believe I did that. Or, you know, we these judgments of I should not be in this position, I should not, she should not be this person. And then we attach all of these feelings to it, which energizes the judgment and causes us even more suffering, you know. And so when we can't accept ourselves, it's hard for us to accept others. And so it's acceptance. What does that look like? How do you accept yourself even when you've disappointed yourself? How do you accept yourself even when you have defined the decision you made as a failure? How do you accept yourself when you just can't seem to get it right? When you believe in your mind that you're not even worthy of being accepted? The first thing that I've done personally when I found myself experiencing that homelessness, and I did, I went through all those emotions. What did I do? And you keep trying to backtrack in your mind. What could I have done differently? You just forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for making a decision that landed you where you are and choose to do better. When your siblings are doing things that, you feel go against the grain of what you guys were taught spiritually, you have to accept them. This is who they are. It doesn't mean that this is who you are. And, you know, looking at my situation with my sister, I'm not God. I can't put her in heaven or hell. I know that what we were taught about um, same sex, I know the story about, um, what is this, the city that, uh, and I'm a Bible scholar, no. Um, but you know the story about the uh, the town that was set on fire. It just leaves my mind right now of what I'm talking about. But we know, you know, Adam and Eve, and uh, people joke about it, but God didn't make Adam and Steve. And we, I know all of that, And but the bond that you have with your sibling, whether your sibling found themselves in jail, don't leave them alone when they do things that um, a lot of people repel them, a lot of people pull away from them. It takes confidence to stand up in your truth of who you are. And so you want to find yourself trying to work with your emotions first about what has happened, whether maybe your sibling had a baby, you know, uh, when they were a teen, and maybe your sibling required more uh, from the parents and you didn't require so much. Um, just try to see things from their perspective. That's what evoked the poem, um, Same Sex Lover, is just trying to see things from my sister's perspective of how alone she must feel, where she's at. Growing up in the church, um, she was repelled by a lot of family members and shunned by a lot of people. No one wants to be out there alone. And so to be able to accept other people, you have to accept and think about how would I be in that situation? You know, think about beyond you when it comes to accepting your siblings and loving your siblings through their um, seasons of whatever they're facing. You know, this wasn't a season for her. But life can be good and life can be fun. And when we release the judgments that we have uh, for other people, and I know those diehard Christians and apostolics and you know, no, it's just wrong, you know, you're going to go to hell, and I'm not going to have any association with you. I challenge you. I challenge you. Where is the love? We draw through the love and compassion of Christ. You know, um, if our children are doing things that go against the word of God, 
we still, as ministers and pastors and teachers and elders, we our first ministry is our family, and God commands us to love one another. There's nothing more hurting, and this is a totally different podcast, but growing up in the church, when you do things that are uh, that go against the word of God and your parents and your families, especially when they're um, ministers and pastors and they they just drop you, that's so hurting. And I think about you know what if their saints did that? How? And I'm not saying every pastor is like that. This has just been my experience a few several hundred no <laughs> a couple of times, you know, but. Just think about when your church member comes to you with a problem that they have and you don't immediately put them out the church. So why do it seem like in my past experience, because I don't want to place judgment on everyone, what I experienced was people were put out of the hearts of the ministers and uh, lay people that I grew up with. Don't put your children out of your heart when Someone, your child or your sister, um, your brother, come to you about who they are, what they've done, the lifestyle that they've chosen that may be contrary to God's word. When they come to you about that, that is the time to love on them even the more. That's the time to cling to them, not to push them away. And so, you know, We draw people in with love. Do you accept their lifestyle? No. But do you want to lose the relationship that you two have formed? You got to learn to have a fire. You got to learn to have a balance, a just weight. You got to learn to be just and and think through things instead of just slapping people over the head with the Bible. The word is true. But your relationship, how do you deal with that? And so that's what I wanted to talk about today. It's just loving <clears throat> one another as we are. And the only way that I feel that we can truly accept others is when we truly accept ourselves. And everybody may not know your history, but we all have sinned and fall, fallen short, you know, as I shared in the poem. And so I just want us to think about, you know, when – Just as we, I have so much to say, I'm just like stumbling over my words, but I just want us to think about how can we as individuals, even church-going, God-fearing, some of us Holy Ghost-filled people, how can we be a little bit more loving and kind to our siblings who may not walk that path? Do we throw the whole relationship away? Or do we say, I love you, and we're going to have a relationship. This is who you are, and this is who I am. It doesn't mean, and I think the biggest struggle for a lot of people is, well, if I am um, if I maintain our relationship, then does that say that I condone their behavior? No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that you... Um, think that it's okay for someone to have a child out of wedlock or for someone to abort a child um, or for someone to be a same-sex lover. What it means is that you love that individual enough to maintain their relationship, to maintain, you know, the, the relationship with them and the love. When I decided to embrace my sister, I, we already had a lot in common, but it just intensified our relationship. Um, and it would be so cute because we would be out shopping. She would be in the little uh, tennis shoes section. I'm in the heel section. We're both so girly girl in our own right, in our own way. Um, when we had relationship issues, I would talk to her from the woman's perspective, and she would listen, and she would talk to me um, from the masculine perception, perception, I'm sorry, perspective, forgive me. Um, and we can learn a lot from one another. I learned a lot of the, learned about a lot of the, uh, the things that she faced as a dominant woman in a same-sex relationship things that I just heard about on television that she's living. And as a coach, I was able to give her insight, wisdom on ways to cope and deal with that. 
So I'm just saying that there are more ways to build a relationship and ways to drop seeds of love. It should be all about love. That's the bottom line. You loving you for who you are and where you are and you being able to love your siblings, no matter where they've been. Our siblings are like, <laughs> they they are the ones that teach us about our first relationships. A lot of us grow up sharing rooms with our siblings, dealing with um, maybe your sibling is really junky and you're really neat. We learn how to cope. We learn how to um, manage our emotions with our siblings. I mean, like they're a lot of times they're our first best friends, especially if you two are close in age. You know, if you're not close in age, your sibling can be, still be your best friend. You go through things before they do, and, and when they get to that point, you can share with them on how you dealt with it, how you cope with it. So a lot of things that I want you to take away from this podcast today, total acceptance, accepting yourself for who you are and remembering that you have, um, quote, unquote, faults and sins that people cannot see. But you love yourself and you push through. And if you don't, I challenge you to forgive yourself because you can't go back and change anything that you may have done, you know. So forgive yourself and make a decision. Choose to do differently. If you and your sibling, if there's a rift in your relationship because of something that has happened, I challenge you to make amends. Get out of your comfort zone and make amends with your sibling because life is short. For many of you that follow me, you know that I was diagnosed with uh, stage 3 colon cancer in 2016, and that was very frightening. You know, I didn't lose my life, thank God, but it just shows you the fragileness of life. We don't have time to waste. If you haven't spoken to your sibling in years and you can't even remember what y'all are mad about, it's time to squash it, and it's time to just forgive, forgive. Sometimes there's no understanding. There's no explanation. There's no um, apology, but forgive to free your heart and then accept your siblings for who they are. My sister accepts me. I'm, um, I'm quirky sometimes. Sometimes I'm the life of the party. Sometimes you wouldn't even know I'm there. Sometimes I'm... Um, present a lot. Sometimes I pull back so much that you got to call me and say, are you okay? Everything good with you? You know, and I'm just like that. And she accepts me and I love it. And I love how our relationship has evolved. You know, she got married to her wife, Kenya, in 2016, April of 2016. And that was the same month that I was diagnosed with the cancer. And my sister was there in the midst of trying to um, get ready for her wedding and and get ready for her honeymoon. She was there working at the hospital back with me, you know, doing things for me. Our siblings are, they can be our ride or die. So whatever situation you're facing with your sibling, I pray that you would mend it, that you will accept your sibling so that you could be fully accepted. Love on them. Show them the word of God through love and relationship. I hope that you have enjoyed this podcast. I want you to stay connected with me. You can learn more about me at my website, www.cynthiasnewell.com. Next week, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but it's going to be on the theme about total acceptance, accepting ourselves, learning how to release these judgments. You know, <laughs> funny story before we go. Um, judgments can keep us locked into this certain magnetic energy field where if we have so much energy around these judgments, we can cause us to keep repeating the experience. And so I want to talk about how we release judgments. And I have just a couple of funny stories that I want to share, you know, with you of how I caught myself and my judgments <laughs> um, and how they're just so embedded and they're ready to just come forth. So if you have judgments in your mind that are creating um, circumstances, results, and situations that you are really ready to let go of, tune in to next show. I'll be with you in a couple of weeks. We, I do the podcast every second and fourth Saturday of the month, so I'll be back with you on the 27th. I really have enjoyed being here with you today, and I want to hear from you. Like, if you got value 
out of today's podcast an aha moment. If you can relate, like if this message like really hit home for you, I want you to connect with me on Facebook. You can find me at From Powerless to Powerful Podcast. You can also find me at Poetess Cynthia Sherrell. I want you to follow Elation Gospel Radio Network. Um, She's doing, Kimmy Robinson is doing great things. There are some other wonderful shows on this network. Be sure to check them out on Spreaker. We are also on iHeartRadio. And we're on, um, what is that one, Lord? My mind. Um, Spotify. We're also on Spotify. So I want you to check us out. Check all the other um, radio hosts that are here sharing the good news from their perspective, um, lessons that, you know, we all can benefit from. I want you to make sure that you enjoy today. I want you to remember to exhale when life feels heavy. I want you to breathe in and feel relaxed. And don't forget to unplug to recharge your spiritual batteries so that you can be refreshed and revived. Don't forget, you deserve to make it a great day, and I've enjoyed being with you today. I want you to I want to thank you so much for sharing your Saturday afternoon with me. Um, I do have an upcoming teleseminar that I would love for you to be a part of where I'm going to teach you about why you're miserable on your road to success. And um, that's going to be the fourth Thursday of the month. You can learn more about that at my website www.cynthiasnewell.com under the Empower Me tab. Lots of great things going on at Dare to Dream. All right, y'all, it's my time. I love you. Be blessed. <laughs>